Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech Ask, where you use hashtag AskGMBN Tech and we try and get back to you on a Monday show like this. So let's jump straight in with a question from Paul Andrews, who said, I'm restoring my wife's Bontrager race light after it sat in the garage for 10 years. Oh, uh, the Bontrager Titec seat post is seized in the frame and the bonded head is loose, so I can't twist it out. Uh, any tips? Um, okay, so for any seat posts that are stuck in the frame here, uh, yeah, obviously give it a really good clean um, and try and get some maintenance spray down it. So something like this that's anti-rust, anti-corrosion, you can kind of spray in and hope that it kind of see seeps down into the frame. It might take a while to soak, um, but if that isn't a goer, uh, then your last resort is basically to heat and cool it. Um, so the best way to do this is to get your frame and put it over a bucket or a big, you know, plastic container and get a boiling hot water from the kettle and mind your hands, obviously, and pour it over the seat tube or where the seat post is. And what you're trying to do, whether it's carbon or metal, the seat post, um, you're going to try and make it expand and contract. So you let it cool down um, and then you can touch it, wiggle it, see if you can wiggle it out. If not, you might actually have to repeat, repeat this process um, a couple of times and then really try and wiggle it out. So you, there's a lot of elbow grease involved in that. Um, you may even want to get a hammer and tap the side of the uh, saddle um, on either side and just literally try and shock it free. Um, I've also seen someone on uh, Instagram use a forklift truck. Uh, if you have one of those handy, yeah, just uh, suspend your bike and uh, pop it out easy enough. <laughs> um, but if you don't, then yeah, maybe some hot water will sort you out. So Shaf Hamid said, uh, Shaf Hamid 83 said, hi guys, I just got my fork serviced by my local bike shop. I understand and appreciate the need for regular service, uh, but my question is motorcycle forks, uh, especially motocross bikes, don't have anywhere near the kind of regular service intervals. Um, your question goes on, but basically you're asking why? Um, so, well, first of all, let's start with road motorbikes. Uh, they don't undergo as much um, much of a hammering like mountain bike forks do. So if you're just commuting, you know, you're driving on the roads, um, then it's a lot smoother. They're not gonna uh, undergo the same kind of impacts that you do if you were off-road, for example. Uh, they might also be coil as well. Uh, so they might not need as much servicing as say an air fork, uh, which does need a bit of looking after with replacing uh, oils and stuff inside. Um, you've mentioned motocross and well, to be honest, motocross forks do need 35 to 40 hours of um, uh, service work. So after 40 hours, you should be servicing it. Whereas uh, Fox mountain bike forks are around about 50 hours. So actually they do service them more probably because they take even more of a hammering than mountain bike forks. So it's kind of the level of abuse that your forks will take. Uh, even a road mountain bike, if you're taking it on the track, for example, and it's undergoing a lot of stress from braking forces, you're still going to need to service that a lot as well. So I think it's a little bit of a misconception that motor uh, cross or motorbikes need less care. I think they do need more if they undergo more sort of rigorous um, use. So yeah, there's um, a couple of things in that. But Zachary Charest said, I've been building up a bike over the last couple of months and I just installed my rear derailleur and cassette. I'm having issues where there's lots of slack when I'm in my lowest gear and I can't shift up into the highest gear because the derailleur pulley makes contact with the cassette. I've maxed out the B-tension screw with no luck there. Um, what else can I try? Okay, if there is slackness in the chain um, and that's what you're trying to fix, that is something uh, your chain could be too long. 
So basically, if you're in your highest gear, your hardest gear, or that smallest gear at the back, um, then your chain shouldn't be baggy. It shouldn't, you sh it should have a little bit of tension um, and your derailleur shouldn't be touching itself. So when it goes into the smallest gear, your derailleur, I don't know if I've got one, or no, I don't, your derailleur gets smaller and that derailleur should not be touching itself. There should be enough tension uh, to keep it apart. Um, so most manufacturers will recommend a certain chain length. Um, usually what you would do is get your chain around your biggest cog at the front, if you have more than one, and then around your biggest cog at the back, you meet the two points where you would potentially attach a quick link, and then you add three to four for a high tail uh, and four to five for a suspension bike, and then you attach that to it. So that four to five or five to six um, links that you add will give you enough of a bend in the derailleur to create the tension but also keep the derailleur apart when it's in its smallest ring. Um, so check the length and think about whether you could pull it in a bit more um, at the bottom. Omnistar says, how do you tell what pedal is the right one and what pedal is the left one? Um, I think Shima some of Shimano pedals label uh, L and R, um, but someone like Crank Brothers, for example, uh, their left pedal has an indent, so you kind of feel this notch on the uh, where it threads in, and so it's slightly different to the right one. However, um, I always find that if you offer up the pedal to uh, the hole in your crank and you start pedaling backwards, it should thread in. If that's not working, then you use the other pedal and it should thread in. And that will work on both sides because they go in an opposite direction, but it works if you always pedal backwards. So that should be a quicker way of figuring it out. Uh, Bugboy152000 said, uh, I've got a Kids Ride Shotgun Pro for Christmas and remember you mentioning putting a headset bearing in place of a spacer. Can you remind me what you used so I can purchase? Uh, I can't wait to get Dottie out on a bike with me. Thank you, Dottie and Anna. Um, so that would have been Doddy mentioning that because he's used this with his um, kid Dustin um, and I believe you just need a bearing like a, a normal 1 1 8 uh, steerer bearing and you might need to use two together uh, depending on how much um, how much space the strap so uh, for anyone who's watching there's the kids ride shotgun saddle that goes around the top tube but the kids ride shotgun pro uh, attaches around the steerer and so to loosen that up and make it a slightly nicer movement for you um, and your steerer you just add a steerer headset bearing in place of the stems so it attaches around that instead of um, the steerer and it just gives a nicer feel so you might need to use two so that there's no rubbing anywhere or just to make up that space um, in place of the steerer spaces that you had. Uh, finally here from Rares Georgie uh, says hi team I want to convert from 160 rotor in the back with IS mount to a 180 or maybe a 203 millimeter rotor. What kind of mount should I buy? Uh, and do 160 to 203 adapters exist? Thanks for the answer and keep up the great work. Um, yeah, there's lots of adapters. They're effectively like little bridges that make sure that when you attach the caliper to it, that it sits in the correct place for your rotor so that the caliper grabs the rotor in the correct place regardless of what size it is. Um, so if you change the rotor size, you need to change this little mount. Um, what you do need to check, however, is what your frame's maximum is, because there are some frames out there that won't allow a 203 rotor. Um, so I would check that and then check what is the um, standard for your frame and then get the adapter for that. 
um, and it should work out fine. Um, if you're not sure at all, then always just take it into a bike shop, let them have a look because you can always buy it from that bike shop there and then and be sure that you're getting the right thing and it shouldn't be much of a markup if at all. So it's kind of worth the knowledge. Anyway, that's all I've got time for this week. Uh, but if you have any questions of your own, do use hashtag AskGMBNTech down below right now uh, and we'll try and get back to you on a Monday.